love Father's Day. Father's Day is a wonderful day. It's a tough day for many. The array of emotions of Father's Day is on this both ends of the spectrum over here. I hate it. Why bother? It's the dumbest day of the year, and I love it. It's awesome. I can't look forward to it every year, and most of us are, all of us are somewhere in between. And, and it's, it's a crazy day, wonderful day. Um, but God in his word has given us some really strong, strong advice about honoring our mothers and fathers. And, and it's, it, it is very, 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 very clear. And those of you who know me know that I, the Word of God is my, is, my, is, is my guide. It's my life and it's my foundation. And everything I do, whether I think it's right or wrong, don't matter. Whether you think it's right or wrong, don't matter. What does God say? What does God's Word say? That's what matters. So, well, well I, just don't, I just don't agree with that. And your point... I don't agree with guns, but, you, you know, you, somebody pull a gun on you and say, I'm going to shoot you if you don't move. Well, you, I don't believe in guns. <laughs> How's that going to work for you? You, you say, well, I don't believe in guns. Well, you may not believe in guns, but you'd be just as dead as if you did. It, 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 see, and, and God's Word is truth, solid. I don't know if you saw the post I put on. I, I shared Franklin Graham's post about uh, Dr. Fauci said, science is truth. And Franklin Graham took offense to that and said, no, science is in search of truth, but it's not true. Scientists don't even agree. It's true. It's true. Uh, uh, that's why they call it research. They search and then they research and they research again and they research some more. And then they find stuff they didn't know before that disagree with what they found before. And it, No, but the word of God's truth. And God in the Old Testament gave us Ten Commandments. And one of those, commandment number five, is this commandment in Exodus 20, verse 12, that says, Honor your father and mother. Then you will live a long life, full, long, full life in the land your God is giving to you. Now that's in Exodus chapter 20, as part of the Ten Commandments written on the tablets that God, uh, by Moses, he brought down from the top of the mountain. And, and he said, well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to honor my... He didn't say you got to like them. He didn't say you got to approve of everything they did and give them thumbs up and, and tell them they're great and lie to them. But it does say we have to honor them for the position that they are in as fathers. Now, God was serious about this. In, Luke, in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 9, listen to what God said. Anyone who dishonors father or mother... must be put to death. Such a person is guilty of a capital offense. In verse 20 of the same chapter, Proverbs 20, 20, if you insult your father or mother, your light going to be snuffed out in total darkness. You say, well, man, I just, that's just so cruel. I get it. This was not a law forever. This was a law for the time during the pagan crazy, insane world. You think our world was crazy now. Back in those days, and when God gave this commandment, Israel, I mean, the people of that area were sacrificing their children in a burnt, in a, as a burnt offering to the God of this or the God of that. They were, they, I mean, they had prostitutes in the temples where they were, they, I mean, it was sick, and it was messed up. And God was giving this order to bring the diseases were running a rampant, and God was bringing law and order. And, and here God said this. Uh, another command in the law was that if a teenager, now listen, just stay with me a moment. If a teenager insulted or refused to obey their parents, the law said you take them before the gate of the city, the elders make the decision, and they stone them to death in front of the city gate. That's horrible. Yes, it is horrible. It's wrong in our, in our world today. It's horrible, but let me give you a little insight here. You don't have to do about one every 20 years. I mean, if, if I'm 16 and I see a rebellious buddy 16 just get killed, because that's not a deterrent if you want to, but it'd be a deterrent for this old boy. 
I love what people, all these people who say capital punishment is not a deterrent. It might not be for you, but it sure would be for me. It is for me. And sometimes I think people who are against capital punishment just are against, they, they want people to suffer. They think, well, if they get capital, you know, they're going to get, well, whatever. I don't want to get political, but I just want to say that uh, God's word is very clear. He wants me to honor my father and my mother and you too. Now, the Apostle Paul echoes that uh, later on in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. And he says, children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. So teenagers, obey your parents. We're not going to kill you. So don't have to worry about that. We're not going to stone you to death. Okay, thank God. Thank God. But uh, verse 2, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If verse 3, you honor your father and mother, things will go well with you, for sure, while you're living at home. They'll go well with you. Uh, and you will have a long life on earth. There's not a perfect father in the world. There's not a perfect parent in the world. None of us are perfect, not one. And neither are your parents. But God says, honor them. Now, let me say this. Perhaps you had a wonderful, wonderful father. Maybe your father was like Mr. Perfect. Maybe he provided for you. He was always there for you. He may have even coached your little league team or your sports team. And your memories of your father are, are, and your childhood may be perfect or very close to perfect. I'm very happy for you. But very few of us had that. Very, very few of us had that. You say, well, I don't think there's ever anybody exists. Yeah, there's a few of those around. Um, my sister Connie's son, Brian, his wife's father just passed away last Tuesday, I believe. He was 71, and she says he was the most perfect father in the world. She gave this whole litany about all him and how great he was and all this. He uh, went in on Monday for a COVID test, or Tuesday, and they gave him the test, and he went home and went back to the clinic to, uh, or the hospital, wherever it was, to get the test read on Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever the next day was, and dropped dead of a massive heart attack in the lobby of the, the clinic, 71 boom, gone. Nothing to do with COVID. He just died. Um, you know, maybe you had that perfect father or maybe you had a father like the rest of us. I told you the story about Hallmark Card Company years ago. Did an ex they, they didn't do it as an experiment. They just decided to send a bunch of Mother's Day cards into the f to a federal prison. And they sent a whole lot of Mother's Day cards in and every one of them was taken and mailed out. So they thought that was cool. They would decide on Father's Day, they'd send a bunch of Father's Day cards in. And according to the, the statistic I read, the article I read, they, they, um, they, not one Father's Day card was mailed. Not one. So it's obvious we have Father's Day issues. Now, I don't, again, I don't know how you grew up. I don't know what kind of example you had. But I didn't have the greatest example. I had a wonderful, wonderful, godly mother. She had her issues, like all of us, but she was an amazing lady. But my father, not so much. My father taught me things that are contrary to God's word. He modeled things for me. He was a wife beater. He was an abuser. He was an angry, mean man when he did not get his way. As long as you jumped when he said jump, and you said how high on the way up, and you did everything he told you to do when he told you to do it, he was the easiest fellow in the world to get along with. But the moment you didn't do exactly what he said when he said it, you was going to have heck to pay. And there was no mercy. And, and, and I grew up with that example, and, and um, it, 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 it affected me for sure. But once I got into God's word, and I learned and I realized that uh, we have a good, 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 good father in heaven who loves us. And he came down to this earth, and, and again, this is my belief, 
He came down to this earth in a form of a human and he was born in a stable, laid in a manger, raised in poverty and, and, and raised in, in meek, at least meager circumstances, lived in a little area, never walked more or traveled more than what a, you know, just a very small distance he traveled and, and, and he lived his life and he ended up getting crucified between two thieves. Imagine that. The God of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth, born in a stable, died between two criminals. Was laid in a borrowed tomb. I mean, that's, that, that story don't even make sense if I was going to create some story to get people to believe, just a make-believe thing. That, it just don't make sense. The creator God would come down to this earth in a, a lowly form of a lowly servant and be beat beyond recognition and crucified in our place on a cross. And, and, and that story don't, I mean, from a natural earthly standpoint, it just don't make any sense. That's why my wife said believing is one of the hardest things we'll ever do. Embracing this truth, it just don't make sense to our logical mind. But the Bible says, and the Bible is accurate archaeologically, it's accurate uh, historically, it's accurately scientific from beginning to end so far as it gives scientific information. It's, and, and I submit to you, it's spiritually accurate. And, and Jesus died in our place, and he set an example for us to follow. I remember as a young pastor, um, I, one of the things I set as a goal is when I grow up, I want to be like Jesus. Have I accomplished it? No, not at, all, not, all, not at all, all the way. But hopefully I got a little bit of it. Hopefully I'm close. I'm, I'm pursuing it. I'm continuing. And he gave us an example to follow in the Word. And the Apostle Paul lays it out. And, and, and you may struggle with some of the things I'm going to say today out of Ephesians chapter 5, but it, it's not my words. I, I'm just the mailman. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just, the, I'm, giving you, I'm giving you words from God's word to help you be the, the human being God created you to be. The good, godly, righteous person that, that treats others like, a, that you, like you'd like to be treated. See, in the Old Testament, there was hundreds of commandments. Jesus balled it all down to two. And people say, as Christians, we're still under the Ten Commandments. No, we're not. We're under the Two Commandments. Love God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. We can't even get two right. <laughs> it's crazy. We talk about how all this stuff, but So Paul gives us some guidelines. And again, as, as we're going to do as human beings, as Americans, we're going to take what we like and we're going to leave what we don't. That's just what we do. It gets us into some trouble sometimes. But we say, well, I know you say what's right, but that's what I'm going to do because what I want to do, and, and, and I get it. But we pay the price for that. <clears throat> we do. We have a little saying out Wildwood that says you do the crime, you do the time, and uh, you make the choice. But uh, in life's the same way. Um, but remember that old adage that we say in uh, sometimes in the program: if you want something different than you've ever had, you got to do something different than we've ever done. Because if nothing changes, nothing changes. So I'm gonna give you a little Paul's advice. How to be a godly human being. See, if you didn't have a good father, here's something maybe you might want to think about. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. It says it right out of the chute. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you're his dear children. You know, Miriam and I are going to do a little study tonight uh, in our table talk tonight at 7 o'clock on Facebook Live, and um, we're going to talk about this whole issue of childhood and fathers and how that our Heavenly Father has adopted us. He chose us. And kids who were adopted, 
you know, a, 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 if you were a biological parents raised you, you know, your biological parents didn't really have a choice. They you just came out and they got stuck with you. And maybe they told you you were an accident. Maybe they were told you that you're, you weren't unplanned. Maybe, maybe they told whatever. But let me tell you, when you're adopted, you get chosen. You, you can't say, well, you're an accident. We really didn't want mean to adopt you. They did. They adopted you on purpose. God chose to adopt you. And the price he paid was his son died on that cross. He, he adopted you into the kingdom of God. And he wants you to act like it. He wants you to act like his children. How many of you have kids and your kids are in the grocery store or you're somewhere and your kids do something really stupid and embarrass the life out of you? We had this preacher years ago we heard about and uh, his mother was very, she was like really prim and proper kind of a lady and, and he had a teenage son who was really a trouble making, he was just mischievous and one day where they were in the mall and he really did a really stupid stunt, started hollering and acting like he was special needs and it was really just embarrassed her, embarrassed her to no end. She wanted to kill him and uh, it was a funny story but uh, we do that to our father sometimes. We embarrass him. We embarrass our heavenly father but he still loves us. But he still loves us. Here's verse 2. Live a life filled with what? Love. Following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma. Live a life filled with love, not hate, not anger, not bitterness, not resentment, meanness, evil, but live a life of love. Now it gets a little sticky in verse 3. Paul said, let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes, filthy language, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. So a lot of folks, and I know I had a potty mouth when I got saved. I mean, I, 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 had a, I was a 17-year-old potty mouth. I mean, I, I let the F-bomb fly and whenever I felt like it. And, and, uh, and, but the Bible's clear on multiple of cases. If you're a Christian, stop it. <laughs> so, well, I just can't control it. I just can't control it. Yeah, that, 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 that's a lie. You control it whenever I show up. And I don't tell you to. I don't ask you to. But you don't let the words fly and tell the filthy jokes that you might tell when I'm not around or my bride is not around. Now, a few of you do when you get angry. I get it. <clears throat> That's okay. But see, it's really a choice. It's a choice. Say, well, I, I just, it's not a choice. What is it? It's a habit. It's a habit. I have folks got a habit of lying. I have folks got a habit of stealing. Folks got a habit of cheating others. Those are habits. You developed a habit, taking what you wanted, whenever you wanted it. It's a habit. Well, I just can't stop. Well, of course you can. But you got to want to. How many hundreds and thousands of people who have quit tobacco because they wanted to? So I, I just smoke, I just can't quit. Yes, you can. I've known guys go to Wildwood for 10 years and grab a cigarette the day they get out of the joint and start back smoking again. Hello? Tell me you can't do it. I've known women who get pregnant, never smoke a cigarette, wake up on the delivery table after the baby's born having a nicotine fit. Tell me you can't. Don't, don't, don't believe that lie. Don't believe that lie. Paul said, stop it. Instead, live a life of gratitude to God for the life he's given you. I know this is not a popular message, and you know, I'm going to get some flack and make it an email or a letter or something, but I'm just telling you, uh, I, I'm just telling you, I'm reading the Bible. You can be sure. Let me move on. I'll quit meddling and move on here. Verse 5. 
You can be sure that immoral, impure, greedy people will not, uh, uh, no, no greedy, immoral, impure person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God, for a greedy person is an idolater who worships the things of this world, who steals from people and, and all about the money, all about everything, and, and don't matter about people, it's just about me getting what I want, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give my name's Jimmy. Take, 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 take. And, and that's your whole life. And, and I get that. He said, well, who's going to go to heaven? Well, there's a whole lot of people going to heaven. And you, you will too if, if you surrender your life to God and begin to grow. I'm not talking about perfect. None of us are perfect. But, but give me a break. Hello? It, it, it's, it, God wants us to, 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 to take responsibility for our choices. Verse 6, don't be fooled by those who try to make excuses for these sins. For the anger of God will fall on all those who disobey. Don't participate in these things that these, the things that these people do. For once your life was full of darkness, but now you got the light from the Lord and you know better. So live as people of light. Uh, Lepaka had an old friend uh, years ago, Cully. You remember Cully? Some of you guys in the program remember old O.B. Cully. He was mean on a junkyard dog. Tough. Lord have mercy. And guys in the AA program would come to him and give him 49 excuses and he'd just tell them, shut up and go on and get drunk. You don't want to quit. You ain't ready. Get it. Just get out of here. When you get ready to choose something different, it's your choice. It was my choice. It, 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 it's, it's a choice. Um, you know, some of you know I'm a, uh, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And here's one of my Star Wars verses. Once you were full of dark side. No, back up. Where is it? Verse 8. Verse 8. For once you were full of the dark side, but now you have the light from the Lord. So live as a warrior of the light. One of my favorite scenes is one of the first movies when Luke was being raised by his aunt and uncle as a young man. And he went off chasing whatever the things, grasshoppers or jack, jack, jackrabbits or whatever out in the wilderness with, with his uh, droid. And, and uh, he came back and his aunt and uncle were killed. Their building, their family, their, everything was destroyed. The house was destroyed, everything, and he was the only human on the planet. His whole life was destroyed. He had nothing to go back to. I think some of us would be better if we had that whole life destroyed, so we had nothing to go back to. But Luke made a choice to accept his responsibility as a Jedi warrior, as a warrior of the light. Oh, and he had a lightsaber, and so do you. It's called a Bible. It's called a Bible. And you only imagine in the movie how many time, how much time he spent practicing as a young man on the island, with the planet, whatever, and the, with with his lightsaber to get good at it. And we think we're gonna come one one time on Sunday and learn it all. We're gonna read the Bible just a few minutes on Sunday, and, or, or, or read a little thirty second, and, and we're gonna get good. No. If you want something different than you've ever had, my friend, you're going to have to do something different than you've ever done. And I'm, here, I'm not here to try to rain on your parade or pop your bubble. I'm here to help you if I can. And, and if you will make a decision to live as a person, people of the light, verse 9, for this light within us produces only what is good and right and true. And if your life is producing something that's not good and right and true, check the source. You may be deceived in following the dark side and don't even know it. Uh, verse 10 will change your life if you get verse 10. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Uh, th this... 
I, I just made a decision many years ago, God. I want what you want. I, I don't know what to do. I, I get stuck in I, I get stuck in life, and I don't know how to live. I don't know what to do. But So I go to God, and I say, God, what is it that pleases you? I want my life to please you. Again, this is for me. you you got to choose. you got to find your way. But I want to live my life. I want to carefully determine what pleases God. And being mean to this woman over here doesn't please the Lord. Being rude and mean to you doesn't please the Lord. Being a jerk to anybody doesn't please. Being disrespectful of another human being, red, yellow, black, or white, we are all precious in his sight. Yes, I'll say it. All lives matter. Sorry about that. I'm telling you, we all matter, okay? We all matter. All of us matter. And I get it. I, I get it. But I'm telling you, God loves you, but he wants you to treat others with that same love. There's no excuse to be a jerk. There's no excuse. Verse 11, i got to hurry. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil dark side. And accept, instead, expose them. Call me a snitch, call me what you want. But dude, I'll dial 911 in a nanosecond driving down the road. I'm a ready driver. R-E-D-I. Report every dummy immediately. I'm not sure that's what it stands for, but... Um, I'm sorry. I, I, I just, I, 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 don't, I don't have no problem calling 911. I don't have a problem exposing deception and, and evil. That's my job as a warrior of the light. Again, you don't have to agree. I'm just talking about me. Verse 12. It is shameful even to talk about the things these ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. I, I can walk into a room and I can just feel people just they get weird they when they know I'm there they, they just get weird it's kind of like when you turn a light on and down south in them southern houses I grew up in turn a light on the cockroaches head to the wall man I mean uh, they just they, they just run um, it just when the light shines verse 14 for the light makes everything visible that's why the it said Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. I tell you something, your life matters. You matter. You make a difference. Don't believe that lie. Don't believe that lie. Verse 15, it gets gooder. So be careful how you live. So be careful how you live. Don't live like idiots, fools, but live like those who are wise. See, Pastor, you calling me a fool? If the shoe fits, dude. I ain't looking at nobody. I'm looking down here. Don't I? I'm not looking at you. I'm just saying. Be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. Verse 16, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Oh, verse 17, I wish I could spend a whole sermon on this. Don't act thoughtlessly but try to understand what God wants you to do that's one of our biggest mistakes we just operate on autopilot hey I just felt like telling him he was a I just felt like slapping him I just wanted to punch him I just felt like I just felt like your feelings are stupid <laughs> your feelings will put you back in jail if you go by them Amen. telling you you live by your feelings you headed for destruction don't act Thoughtlessly. You'd be like that one old boy. Never mind, I ain't gonna say that. I'll leave that alone. Okay, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what God wants you to do. And I'm gonna say it. Here it I, I, I ain't I ain't this ain't mine. I'm just reading. I'm just reading the book. Don't act thoughtlessly. Understand what God wants you to do. The pocket, this is your verse right here, verse 18. Don't be drunk with wine 
or alcohol or any substance that impairs your ability to make wise decisions. Don't do it. It's going to ruin your life. But instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Spirit of God. Woo! I'm telling you what, I wouldn't trade, I wouldn't trade nothing for the life that God has given me post 17 years old when I gave my heart to the Lord on that beach. I wouldn't trade any. I told him, maybe, was it this service or, or first service? I said, we're going to have a party next June because I will have celebrate my 50th clean, sober, saved birthday. 50 years. 1971. The last time I touched a drop of alcohol on purpose. I ate a few pieces of stupid candy with it, and they tricked me, and I drank a little NyQuil every now and then, but, uh, but other than that, I, uh, I, I, don't, uh, I haven't touched a willful, I mean, I haven't had a beer, I haven't had a glass of wine, or a bottle of wine, a glass of wine, who drinks a glass of wine? Uh, I had a, a bottle of wine, I mean, I, I just, uh, uh, 50 years, I mean, praise God. Don't be drunk. Don't, don't go there. I don't care if it's legal. There's a whole lot of things that are legal. Don't make them right. Prostitution's legal. Prostitution's legal in some states. Lying is legal. A whole lot of things are legal, but don't make it right. Choose. Be wise. Oh, and verse 19. Sing psalms, hymns. And, 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 and spiritual songs and make music to the Lord in your hearts oh and verse 20 and give thanks to everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you know I teach anger management and, and, and one of the biggest things about anger is anger is the most damaging emotion you can have and if you're angry at your father, let me conclude with this. If you're angry at your father, you know you're taking him with you everywhere you go. One of my favorite golfing jokes. Any golfers here today? Anybody like golf? Okay, a couple golfers. Well, my favorite, my, my all-time favorite golfing joke is the old man who was telling, somebody asked him what was his worst golf game ever. He said, oh, man. He was back in so-and-so, and he told him the time, said, me and my buddy Fred were playing golf. We were on the fifth tee, getting ready to tee off, and lightning storm came up and struck my buddy Fred and killed him dead right there on the, the, the tee box. Oh, man. He said, that's horrible. He said, it was the worst game of my life. He said, for 13 more holes, hit the ball and drag Fred. Hit the ball and drag Fred. The whole rest of the game. Drag for it. That's a that's a committed golfer right there. Worst game is that. Let me tell you something. Y'all are living. Some folks are living a worse life, and the reason their life is so bad because everywhere they go, they're dragging Fred, your daddy. You're dragging your daddy, dragging your offender, dragging your abuser. You're handcuffed to him. You're handcuffed to her, maybe your mama, and, and you grew up saying, "I'll never be like my mother. I'll never be like my dad." You you are already. And you're dragging them with you. You're dragging them with you. The key to the handcuff is forgiveness. Is forgiveness. I don't care what they did. Until you forgive them, you're dragging Fred. And that ain't no fun. It's a miserable, miserable life. That's why we do Pursuing a Hidden Heart. That's why we do uh, the, the class in Anchorage, the, the, the Beauty for Ashes. That's why we push it. We do it. I mean, Kelly, numerous ones have been there, and they tell you, change their life. I mean, it, 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 if, if you want to change, and let it go. You, you, again, you need to play that video, watch the movie, sing the song, twirl, and let it go. Because until you do, until you do, you're going to be miserable the rest of your life. Give thanks to God for everything. I've heard people say, in my life, I look back over my life, and I have no regrets. You know, I, I don't understand that in sometimes, in some ways. But what I hear them saying is, everything I went through made me the person I am today. So you can thank God for the hell that you went through that made you who you are today, right? Now, we see that now, but next week when we go through a new patch of hell,
Are we going to see that then? So, it's Father's Day. Forgive him. Call him. Write him. If he's dead, write him a letter. Tell him what a jerk he was. Tell him whatever you want to tell him. Burn it. Go to Fred Myers. Go to a Safeway. Buy a helium balloon. Write his name on it with a Sharpie. Tell him what a jerk he was, but tell him you forgive him. And then go out in the parking lot and let it go. Whatever it takes. Remember, if you want something different, would you stand? Father God, I thank you today for your word. I thank you for the good example that you've given us in your word. We don't know how to be good fathers. We don't know how to be good husbands. And so many of us learn way too late. Oh God, I learned how to be a good father too late to do the damage that I did. But God did the best I could do where I was with what I had, and you know that. And many of us are in that place. So we ask you today to forgive us. We come to you today and we say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm messed up. And today I surrender my life and my will to you. And I ask you to come into my heart and be my master and my Lord. I believe that you came down to this earth. I believe you lived. I believe you died on a cruel Roman cross. But I also believe you rose from the dead the third day to give me a new start and a new heart. And so today I surrender my life to you. And I ask you to help me grow, choose to grow, to read your word, to become the man or woman you've called me to be, to get plugged into a church, to a fellowship, to a group, to a meetings, and, and, and be there and show up and be committed. Because, God, I want something different. I want you in my life because I know you're a good, good father. And I thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Now, my lovely wife, hold it, hold it. My lovely wife and her team are coming. Would you be seated? I apologize. I, I went a little bit long, and I apologize. Please be seated, unless you're a father. <laughs>